So I've made a couple of videos recently showing off some budget bushcraft knives, knives that had been sent to me by a couple of companies so that I could share them with you. And in one of my videos, somebody had commented, what about Mora knives? And I said, of course, the original budget bushcraft knife. It's the knife that I started off with. It's the knife that many, many people started off with. So I thought, yes, why not? I'll share my Mora knives with you. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, before we get started, just a couple of things. First off, this is not going to be a full review of each of the knives that I show you. More, it's going to be an overview of more knives in general and sharing the specific knives that I own. Now, this is not all the more knives that I own now or that I have owned. In fact, my very first knife, my very first bushcraft knife, I had other knives before, but my very first bushcraft knife was the quintessential more a clipper. Well, that knife served me for quite a while until I really started to feel that it was too small for my hands. So I gifted it to my younger daughter and I upgraded it to the next knife. I'll show you that and I'll point out which one it is that I upgraded to. So I brought out three of my Mora knives and plus one that's been loaned with to me and I thought I'd share it with you. Now I said it's not all the Mora knives that I own because all of my carving knives, my spoon carving knives, my, my my chip knives and everything else all are made from by Mora. And I, I thought that's that's something for another video. These are ones that I would carry with me in the woods as bushcraft knives. So what I thought I'd do is take you down to my bench top and I would show you the four knives that I have with me and we'll talk about Mora knives in general. So I mentioned a minute ago that the first Mora knife that I purchased for myself as my first true bushcraft knife was the Mora Clipper. Now, I don't think the Mora Clipper is in production any longer. I think they now refer to it as the Mora Companion, and I think there's a Mora Companion HD, standing for heavy duty, primarily the same knife with the Mora Companion HD being a little thicker in the blades, or yes, the blade stock. And the reason they upgrade it from the Clipper is the tang in the knife. So the Mora Clipper had a rather short tang embedded into its hard plastic handle and there were some reports that people were expecting too much from their clippers in other words batoning through wood that was larger than they should have been batoning through and they were breaking the blade out of the knife now i did not have that issue with the one that i uh, i owned mostly because i didn't baton with it or if i did it was very very small pieces of wood but I did a lot of carving with it. I mean, it had very, very thin steel somewhere or thin blade stock somewhere in the uh, uh, thickness of about two and a half millimeters, I believe it was. And uh, yeah, it was a great knife. So I, you know, I only gave it up because I just felt it was a little bit too small for my hands. So what did I get in replace of it? Well, this is it here. Again, I don't think this is in production anymore, but it is a good representation of some of the Mora knives that are in production. So this one is the Mora HQ Robust, and it really is very much uh, identical to the Mora Companion HD, and uh, and so I think it makes a good representation. Now, I've had this for a long time. I've put it through its paces for sure, and I've made a few modifications to it. So let's start with the sheath very quickly. It is a hard plastic sheath. Anybody who's owned these know. Um, there. It's a good sheaf. It's functional. It will do everything you ask of the sheaf. There are a few things you do have to be aware of. On the side, it has a belt clip, just a snap belt clip here, which is not bad for putting it on and off of, of your belt so that maybe you don't want to have it uh, on your belt until you're going into the woods and then you just want to be able to slip it on without having to undo the belt on your pants. So it works out fairly well. Uh, this is a, a work style knife and you can tell that for a couple of reasons. It has the button here. You've probably seen those before, and other sheaves will have the button hole here. So if you had two of them, you could clip one to the other, maybe one that was heavy duty and one that was very fine blade in nature so that you could carry the two of them attached to each other. I don't think that's a feature that too many people have used, but I also understand that could have been buttoned right to your pants. So if you had buttons on the outside of your pants, as some work pants do, then uh, you know you can button it right to your pants as well. 
I'll tell you one thing that's kind of neat about these style sheaves is, and yes, there is a modification on it, I'll show you in a second, is if you happen to be wearing a pair of hiking pants or even a pair of shorts that does not have a belt, you can still clip this into your waistband with a good chance it will stay attached to your pants without losing it because of the design of that. Now that's not the way I carry it. In fact, let's talk about the modification I made for it. So one of the shortcomings of the sheath, in my opinion, is the fact that it sits so high on my belt. Now it's not higher than a lot of other knives, but I prefer a drop uh, blade or drop sheath with a dangler of some type. So I made one and it was really easy to make. Let me take it right off of the sheath. So basically I got a plastic D-ring and some webbing and made a D-ring on a piece of webbing that I could slide onto my pants and slide into the sheath and now it sits and dangles at a better height. Now I found out later that that does something else, something else of benefit. Not only does it ride below the wide waist belt on my backpack. But one of the things that I had noticed, and uh, it, you know, it didn't fail, but it could have. And that is in wearing it without the D-ring on it, if sitting down occasionally, this would bend back this way. I don't know if this will show up on camera, but right where my fingertip is, you might be able to see a little white spot right in the corner. Had I continued to bend that in that nature like that, eventually that would have failed. That's wear and stress mark coming right across the top. Now, it's so small, I'm not concerned about it right now because I've eliminated the problem by having it on a dangler sheath. Okay, more sheaths are functional. They're not necessarily pretty, but they're functional. They even have drain holes in the bottom. One other thing that has been said about more sheaths over time is that the retention, which is just plastic, retention starts to give up and and they don't hold in as well. Well, I for a while I was carrying a piece of bungee cord around here that I could put around the top of the handle on the knife just for extra security. I, I've stopped doing that. It was more of a hassle than anything else, but there may come a day when you decide you want to replace this plastic sheath with something else. I have one thing with me that if you want to save money, you can do yourself. Otherwise, maybe you do want to get a leather sheath for it, and there are a lot of leather sheaths available. All right, let's move on to the knife itself. So here is the Mora HQ Robust as I purchased it. And I call this my first true bushcraft knife because uh, it was the first one that actually fit my hand. It's, it's much, not much bigger, but it is bigger in the grip than the clipper is or the companion. And I'm not sure, I don't have a, a, an HD companion to compare, but I think maybe it's a, about the same size. I say about because again, I'm not sure. I'm gonna give you some specifications for these knives. Again, I, I'll just mention that I am not giving you a full review, but just to give you an idea of what this knife is all about. So overall, the weight for the HQ Robust is 3.7 ounces or 105 grams. The overall length from tip to pommel is eight. 8.86 inches or 22.5 uh, centimeters. The blade itself is 3.9 inches or 10 centimeters. The thickness of the blade is 0.14 inches or 3.5 millimeters. And the height, the height through here is 0.78 of an inch or two centimeters. Now the steel is just says carbon on the blade itself. But my understanding is the carbon steel used by more knives of Sweden is equivalent to 1095. But of course, it's all about the heat treatment and that's something that they do very well, of course. So what did I do to this knife to modify it and just make it a little bit more to my uh, liking? Well, the first thing, they're roughly finished on the spine. The spine has, has a finish on it, but it's rough. It's not something that you would call pretty by any means. And it would not strike a ferrocerium rod or scrape bark. So a few minutes by putting this in a vise and using a file to run down and getting a rougher edge on it, and it was functional after that. I didn't have to do anything else. The other thing I did, and I don't necessarily recommend it, but I liked having this on my knife, is I did uh, find now. Oh, by the way, the tang is what they call three quarters. It comes to about here, and it's a hard plastic sheath that it's molded in with a soft rubber overmold on top. So the black is hard plastic, and the gray is a softer plastic. Um, I drilled a hole through the base of the pommel right here, just so I could put a tiny piece of paracord on. I do that with most of my knives, and that it's something that if I drop this, I can 
should be able to find it a little bit quicker. A loop any bigger than that, though, you run the risk of catching it on branches if you're bushwhacking. So I like to have a tiny, tiny loop on it there. So what are my thoughts on this knife overall? Can't beat it. You know, I have moved on to custom-made knives and more expensive production knives, but I brought this out today to do this video, and I'm reminded again of just how good a knife this is. If I hadn't been a little fussy and want something more, more to fit my hands even, then maybe this is all I ever would have carried, and I, I would be hard-pressed to do better even with a custom knife. All right, so let's enough about the more HQ Robust. Let's put that one aside. So the next knife I, I have is, um, this is referred to as the Mora 510. And I'm gonna take it out of the sheath right now because I have to talk about the sheath in a moment. So this is the Mora 510. Again, I don't believe this is in production any longer. Uh, I think there is an equivalent to it that has similar specifications, but may look a little different in the handle. So the Mora 510, let me give you some specifications for it. Two and a half ounces. I mean, that's incredibly light, right? 70 grams, 8.1 inches or 20.5 centimeters overall, blade length of 3.7 inches or 9.5 centimeters, blade thickness 0.1 of an inch or two and a half millimeters. This was pretty much the standard thickness for a lot of the Mora knives. The height is 0.7 inches or 1.8 centimeters. And in this case, the steel is Sandvik 12C27 stainless steel. So there are two steels primarily used by Moore, And in recent years, there has been an addition we'll talk about in a moment, which one is the carbon steel and the other is the stainless steel. People gravitated towards the carbon steel because of course a bushcraft knife has to be made of carbon steel, right? Well, I don't agree with that. In fact, I prefer the, carb uh, the stainless steel on these knives. And even though it's not a high-end super steel, man, it works. It just works. It stays sharp. It does not rust. It takes a very, very fine edge, holds it well enough, and is easy to resharpen. So what else can you ask of a knife? No, this is small. Uh, very, without question, it's a very small knife. Is it too small? Well, I couldn't use this as a primary knife because of its small size, but boy, as a backup knife or maybe a food preparation knife or a game fish knife, I think it will work just fine. And okay, what about the sheath? So I lost the sheath. Uh, yeah, the sheath is missing, but I have made one for it and I decided to make it in a either a neck carry or a belt carry. So I have a video on making sheaves out of PVC and this is an example of one I did for myself. So I have this set up for neck carry, but I could, I could uh, carry it on a belt if I want. And the retention on this is perfect. So uh, easy enough. If you don't like the sheath you have with your mower or you've damaged it or like me you lost it, then it's not hard to make a sheath to fit these knives. This is actually almost an ideal neck carry knife because a neck carry knife is used for different tasks than your primary belt knife. A lot of the time it's for the small things that you don't need a bigger knife for. It's for fire preparation, it's for food preparation, it's for, uh, well, what else? Carving. Actually this is very close in size to my carving knives. In fact, I would not hesitate to use this knife to carve a spoon with. In fact, I think I have carved a few spoons with this. So yeah, again, just another knife. Again, I don't think it's in production, but I believe there are knives in the same classification that you can purchase now. And again, an inexpensive knife. If it's not a primary knife, it's a great backup or secondary knife to have on you. All right, my third more that I want to share with you. I don't think anybody's collection is complete yet unless you have either this or the new version of this. This is the Mora Outdoor 2000. And uh, you're going to recognize it as soon as they take it out of its case because it was the forerunner, forerunner of what's now known as the Cans Ball. And uh, you know, there's very, very little difference between the Mora 2000, Outdoor 2000 and the Cans Ball. Uh, one of the things I think is different is the handle material, maybe not even the handle shape, but the handle material. And the fact that the Mora 
Cans ball has its spine very, very sharp. In fact, this Mora Outdoor 2000 is somewhat rounded intentionally. It's, it was intended to be a higher class knife than the other working knives. I think this may have been one of the first knives that wasn't intended for industrial purposes, but was in fact intended for outdoor use. I will give you the specifications on it very quickly. So the overall weight of this knife, another very light one at 3.5 ounces, or 98 grams. Overall length is 9.17 inches or 23.3 centimeters. The blade is 4.13 inches or 10.5 centimeters. The thickness of the spine 0.1 inch again or two and a half millimeters and the height 0.9 inches or 2.3 centimeters and again this knife uses the Sandvik 12C27 steel. So a couple of things about it. As I mentioned it was intended to be a higher class knife intended for the outdoor so it had to be multi-use. You wouldn't think a knife with 2.5 millimeter thickness or 0.1 inch thickness would be very sturdy but it is uh, made much, much more sturdy because almost the full height of the knife is full thickness of the stock. It's only the final portion of the blade that is in fact thinner. So it is stronger than, let's say, another knife of the same thickness would be. Now this is the knife, the first one, that came with the dual grind. The grind is, well, the angle of the grind is the same all the way out to the edge, but what differs is the fact that from about little over halfway out to the tip, the blade thins down. So let's see if I can get in close enough so you can see that what they often refer to as a dual grind. The angle of the edge remains the same. It's the thickness of the blade that changes. But don't think that this knife isn't sturdy enough to do all the bushcraft tasks that you act at. You can still baton, reasonably of course. You can still uh, feather stick very nicely with this knife in fact. And you can do something that some of the others don't do well, food preparation. That thinner forward area on the blade just aids in cutting meats and vegetables and things that require a thinner blade much better than any of the other knives. So what about this handle grip? Again, hard plastic with a rubber over mold with a texture grip to it. Um, nice actually. Now I have XL hands, almost double XL hands, and I can still use this knife very, very comfortably without feeling fatigued or that I don't have the control. This style handle, closer to the original Puku style knives, is more a bit more versatile in that I can turn it this way, this way, any way I want in my hand, and I can still use it very functionally. So again, another great knife from Mora. One thing that you'll know, if I haven't already mentioned it, is the Cans Ball, the new one, has the spine sharpened. I think I already mentioned that, but otherwise a very, very similar knife. Three quarter tang, very sturdy. I would not hesitate to baton this if I felt I needed to, but to be quite honest, as with most of my belt knives, if I think I'm gonna be batoning big pieces of wood or, or splitting big pieces of wood, I take something else along with my knife to do that task. I haven't shown you the sheath, but let's do that now. The sheath is intended to have a look of leather. It kind of has a naga hide or leather texture to the outside. Again, it's just hard plastic, so there's nothing special there. It's just intended to look a little nicer. One thing they did do though, is they put a leather belt loop on the sheaf. I think that's kind of cool that they should do that. Again, I believe they were appealing to the outdoor market. Retention. It snaps into place, but over the years of having this, it is loosening up, and I don't mind saying that. I don't carry this on my belt anymore. Often, if I'm going to be taking this, this goes in my pack. I guess I just don't want to run the risk of having this drop out on me. All right, so I've shown you three knives from more that I've owned for some time. I want to show you one more knife, and this is a knife that was loaned to me by a friend of mine. And uh, he just wanted to get my opinion on it. He thought it was the greatest knife in sliced bread, to excuse the pun. And he may be right. This is a much newer knife. Now, I've got my specs here. I haven't, don't have a lot of experience with this knife, but I have been using it a little bit over the last few months. So let's talk about this knife. So again, I probably the second knife in Moore's lineup that was intentionally designed for the outdoor world was the Mora Bushcraft Black, an all black 
knife and sheath. The handle was made of black uh, plastic and overmold rubber. The sheath was black. That blade had a diamond-like coating on it that was also black. It was made of carbon steel and it what people just fell in love with it. And that was considered the ultimate Mora style bushcraft knife until the new Mora Garberg came, Garberg came on the market. So this is a version of the Mora Bushcraft Black, but I think you can guess the name. This is the Mora Bushcraft Orange. Come exactly the same as the black with one exception. Oh, okay, two exceptions. It's orange and this one comes in stainless steel. So what makes this knife so special? Let's get it out of the sheath. Uh, we'll talk about the sheath again in a minute. Let's take a look at the knife and I'll go over the specifications for it. So as I mentioned again, this was intended to specifically be targeted towards the bushcraft market. So that's where the design excels. Everything about the knife speaks of bushcraft type tasks. So let me give you the specifications. This knife is the heaviest of all the knives that I've shared with you today, 4.2 ounces or 119 grams. The overall length is 9 and 1 eighth inches or 231 millimeters. The blade is 4 and 1 quarter inches or 107 millimeters. The thickness is 1 eighth of an inch or 3.2 millimeters. The blade height top from edge to spine is 7 eighths of an inch or 23 millimeters. And again, the steel for this knife is Sanvi. 12c27 so basically this is a little bit bigger a little bit heavier in the stock and a little bit more heavy duty overall it still has similar construction it is a hard plastic mold over the the tang of the knife which again is three quarters of the tang with a softer rubber over mold on top of that a couple of things that make this more of a bushcraft knife than maybe the hq robust that i have is the fact that the shape of the grip it gives lends itself to longer uses so it's got the arch in the back here and it's a bit of a finger choil right up front but no not so pronounced uh, a finger choil or, or um, guard that it gets in the way of using different uh, hand uh, hand holds on it fairly thick through the uh, the sides of the handles just enough so so it fits my hand nicely I feel a especially uh, in control of this knife and I've done just enough feather sticking with this to know that it uh, it you, you're going to be able to use it for long periods of time without tiring yourself out. This knife comes with an incredibly, incredibly sharp spine right from the factory. No modification needed. And uh, yeah, it's it's again just about a perfect bushcraft knife. Now I'm going to talk about the Mora Garberg, but only briefly for a couple of reasons. One, I don't own one. I can't share that with you. I can't compare it against any of these. And I think the reason uh, that I don't own one is because I just think they're too expensive. These are all affordable. Now, I'm going to put the prices in Canada in the video description along with all the specifications. But I, I would encourage you, if you're interested, to look around because these knives can often be found much less expensive than online, such as Amazon on then you're going to pay for them uh, sometimes all of them except the more gerber that knife uh, is literally twice the cost of this knife is it twice as good as this knife do you need a garberg uh, again it's probably not fair i don't own a garberg i haven't even played with a garberg but i cannot imagine that uh, any more would be twice as good as this knife is. Uh, I know it has a better steel. It has a slightly upgraded steel. It is a good steel. It's not a super steel. It is a better steel than this, but you know, along with the better steels comes more sharpening skills needed to keep the, or to resharpen them if they do happen to get dull or you chip them or roll the edges. Sometimes the simpler steels are the better steels because they're easier to maintain. So yeah, the Mora Bush uh, Garberg, I think it probably is an excellent knife. But again, is it better than this knife? For my money, I would stay with either the Bushcraft Orange, likely the Bushcraft Black, because, well, 
yeah, orange. Okay, this actually would be a nice bug out bag knife. If I owned this knife, I keep a backpack packed for leading guided hikes in which I have some emergency supplies, not truly a bug out bag, but the things you need to if you're taking people into the backwoods. And for a while I was carrying this knife in that backpack. I don't have to worry if I drop it that I won't be able to find it. And I don't have to worry about corrosion. That's the two things that you want most in a knife that you're going to put away and uh, and maybe never use, but, you know, it's there. All right, I think I have covered the more knives that I have with me today in sufficient detail. Let's just wrap up with a few more thoughts. All right, just before we close out, a few more thoughts on my Mora knives. I shared my three more belt knives that I kept, and I, of course I do have my Mora uh, carving knives in addition, and I also shared with you a knife that had been loaned to me. And I mentioned before we started that this was not meant to be an exhaustive review of each of these knives and demonstrating them or comparing them one against the other. It was intended to be a discussion around Mora knives and whether or not there's something that you may want to consider for yourself. They are the original bushcraft knives for many, many people. Understandably so. They're not only inexpensive, they're high quality. In fact, I think you'd be hard pressed to find a better knife at anywhere near this price. Not to say that there aren't better knives out there, I'm sure there are, but not at this price. I think the one thing that people have against the more knives is that they don't look very traditional, especially that bushcraft orange. But if you can get by the non-traditional look of it, you know, steel and wood and those types of things, I think you'd be happy to own this. Uh, if I hadn't gotten into the world of custom knives, and sometimes I question whether or not it should have, I would still be using this. And the knife I'd likely be carrying all the time would probably be my HQ Robust. This is now, my, and still is, and has been for some time, my favorite Mora knife because it just does everything I ask of it. I have no doubts about its quality, about its capabilities, and uh, it just feels good in the hand, as do most of the Mora knives. Now, the little 510 is a little small, but I don't ask it to do the same things I would ask to do this. Um, what I would like to do is just open this up to you. Your thoughts on Mora knives, and uh, if anyone has the Garberg and the Bushcraft Black, I would ask me, you to give me your thoughts on those two in comparison to each other. Again, I don't have the Garberg. I'd like to play with one. I just don't think I want to spend the money on one, at least for what they cost here in Canada. Okay, uh, I open it up to you for any comments, any discussion, any questions. Please put that all in the comments section below. I will be putting all the specifications for the four knives I shared with you in the video description, as well as links to where they can be purchased. At least I'll be able to find them uh, so you can get an idea of the price. But again, I would encourage you to take another look around because you may be able to do much better in price. Just before we go, I want to thank my friend Derek for loaning me the Bushcraft Orange and uh, uh, I may have to buy one now, either an orange or a black. Just because of having used this, I have, I have a feeling that this could very quickly become a regular use item for me and may even replace the HQ Robust as my favorite um, Mora outdoor knife. Okay, that's all I have for you today. Get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.